Before we begin this exercise, make sure you've downloaded the instruction page that indicates what article, how many columns, and the headline and deck style to use for each page of laying out these different articles. In addition to this, you need to download the rules of layout that talk about the fundamentals of laying out body copy and also the headline styles for your different articles. Probably the most important one is the very last page of this handout that identifies and gives the name and style for each of the different headlines that we're going to be using. But do pay close attention because during class we're going to cover all of these fundamentals and how they can be achieved when you lay out your different articles. The final thing you'll download is a set of stories. These stories that I'm giving to you are just in a blank basic text file. I'm giving you the headline, the decks when they're used, and all of the body copy to be used and laid out on each individual page. The final thing that you should have finished before starting this exercise is the template for the US broadsheet. Once you finish up this template, we're going to use it within this particular exercise. So to get started, double click on that broadsheet template. And notice when you do that, the title of this should be untitled. This is because when you open a template, it's going to be a blank document. If it says anything else besides untitled, then you simply haven't saved it as a template. You've saved it as a regular InDesign file. Go back and change it before we move on. So to get started laying out the different articles, let's go back to our story sets. And the first article we need to open up will be our anti-terror raids. Notice that we have our headline and our body copy. I'm going to copy the headline first. So I'm going to select everything for the headline, go up to Edit, and Copy. Let's jump back into our InDesign file. I'm going to grab my Type tool, and looking at my instructions, I can see this is going to span three columns. So I'm going to click and drag a text box that's three columns wide. We'll go up to Edit and Paste, and that will paste it into here. Now, notice for now it's too large, so I'm going to do Command A to select everything. Let's open up our paragraph style. And for now, let's give it a much smaller one just to see what it looks like. So there it is, a small serif headline. Before I start doing any editing, let's paste in our body copy as well. So I'm going to return to my document, select everything for the body copy, go up to Edit, and copy, return to my InDesign document, choose my type tool, let's create a text box that's three columns wide. Again, we'll go to edit and paste, do command A to select everything, and then choose the paragraph style of body copy to automatically format it. Now since this is going over three different columns, with it selected we can go up to the very top and choose three for our columns up here. The last thing I need to do is to adjust the height of it so that it automatically shows me everything that's on my page. We want to scroll down so I can see it. There it is. Even if it's off by a little bit, that's okay for now. Let's go back up to here. Now for an article, or excuse me, a headline that's three columns wide, the size of it can be so many lines deep. And looking at my instructions, I see that I can resize this so that my lines will take up about two columns, or excuse me, two rows deep. So with it selected, let's see if what medium looks like. We'll make it a little bit taller. There it is. That looks pretty good. Let's see if we can make it slightly bigger. So with medium selected, Notice that I still got a little bit of room off to the side here, so we're going to click our size of it, going up one, two, three is too much. This looks like 42 is a good size for this one. Now that the headline is done, let's focus on the body copy. The next thing we need to know is how close our body copy needs to be to our headline. If I zoom in, the good rule of thumb is to have at least one baseline between the bottom portion and the top of this. So right now it's a little bit too close. That's definitely too close to there. That's still a little bit close. I'm going to give it one more down to that size. So as far as how close it should be, if I hit W, that's a good distance between those two. The next thing I want to do 
is to make sure my entire columns are modular. So with this one selected, I'm going to click and drag up until all of the different legs are nice and evenly aligned. And this one actually worked out pretty good. If I was to back out now, hit W to go into preview mode. So far, so good. The last thing that I need to do is to format my body copy to get rid of any widows or orphans. And here's how to do that. A widow or an orphan is whenever you have a word on a line by itself or on a, starting a new column by itself. To get rid of these, choose your type tool and let's select the entire paragraph that that word is in. Going up and looking at your tracking, which is this number here, you can increase or decrease it by about 20 to negative 20. So if I increase this by 10, you can see how it, in, it pushes the words apart. Here it is by 20, and you can see it spreads it out and adds words to it nicely. Let's go down and look for another one. So here's the next one for the next paragraph. For this one, instead of increasing by 10 or 20, even though it does work, watch what happens when I decrease it. So there's negative 10, negative 20, and that'll pull it in. The downside to decreasing it is that it also pulls from the end of your document as well. Since it already worked out, I'm going to undo that. Let's increase it back up to there. So going through, finding each individual paragraph, increase it by no more than 20. Once it gets too far, sometimes it's too noticeable. Sometimes this just doesn't work, and if you can't get rid of one, that's okay. But if you can, go through and get rid of each one for this one. There's another one right there. Increase by 10, 20. That looks good. There we have it. So now with all of the widows and orphans taken care of on this page, page one is now complete. Let's move on to the second page. Our second page is going to be the Ebola story. So going back up to our articles, we'll close it out. Let's go find the Ebola story article. The first thing I'm going to do is to copy my headline. So Command C to copy it, jump back into InDesign, grab a type tool. In our case, this story is going to span two columns. So highlight that, Command V to paste it in. And for now, I'm going to keep it nice and small. Our article also has a deck associated with it. So we're going to highlight the deck, Command C to copy it, give it its own text box. Now my instructions indicate that this deck should span just one column. So I'm going to highlight that one. And I'm going to do it small and in a different font. Later on, we'll change this up as well. And then finally, let's place our body copy into here. Click and drag over two columns and highlight all of our body copy for the article. Command C, Command V. When you do Command A, we can choose body copy and automatically it's nice and selected. So in looking at this, my instructions indicate that a two column article can have between two and three lines of text. So let's see what size we can get away with for our headline. With Command A to select everything, let's choose a medium. That's looking pretty good. I can see that I've got a hyphenation right here. So let's see if we can select all and then bump it up until it starts to fit nicely. That's looking pretty good. I still have a little bit of room off to this right hand side. So I'm going to do Command A and manually walk it up until it starts to fill in. Right there is pretty good. So about 49. Now there's another small problem. Notice that as it got larger, my leading stayed the same. And if you look up here, you can see my leading is 39, but the size of it is 49. You never want to have the size of your text larger than your leading. So if this ever happens, that's okay. All you have to do is to increase this until it starts to get 49 or larger. And that starts to breathe and looks much, much better. The other thing we can do is to format our deck. 
Remember, decks need to be something that's a little bit different, usually smaller in weight than your headline, but larger and different from your body copy. What I like to do is to choose my deck, and then instead of using it as a bold, maybe changing it over to regular or even italic. Again, we don't want to have any widows or orphans, so maybe I'll get away with making this a little bit smaller or larger. Let's go larger until everything fits nicely inside of there. I think that looks pretty good with that. The final thing I'll do is now work on my body copy. With the body copy inside of here, remember it's spanning over two columns. First thing we need to do is to adjust our columns to be two. And then let's place it right on top of this. The deck should be flowing inside of whatever body copy you have. So with my body copy, I need to turn on wrapping for my deck. I'm going to send my body copy behind it. So let's go to arrange and send it backwards or send it to the back. Now I can select my deck box. Clicking up here at the top will turn on your text wrapping. And that will allow it to wrap around that article. As with the others, we'll give it a little bit of spacing. And we want to make sure there's about 13 points or one baseline between those two. And that's actually looking pretty good for there. If anything, we could probably bring it up. It's a little bit, a little bit better. We'll go with that. The last thing we'll do, as with the other one, is to adjust for widows and orphans. So I'll select this. See if we can increase the letting. There's one that looks good. Here's another widow. Here's another one. Just realized I didn't make this long enough. Aha! Notice here we've got a unique situation. It's off by about one line. So let's see if we can push these down just enough to make it perfectly lined up. If we can't, that's okay. If we can't push one down, perhaps we can pull one up one line. And then I can readjust this. Now it fits perfectly and there's no widows and orphans. With that done, now we've got page two finished up. Let's zoom out and go to page three. For my third page, this is gonna have the brain surgery article. So going back to my articles, I don't need this one. Let's find the brain surgery, open it up. I'm gonna select the headline, Command C to copy. Grab my type tool. This article is going to span four columns and it's going to have a slammer headline. So with that, I'm going to click and drag over four columns. Let's paste in my article. Now a slammer headline starts off with a nice bold single word and it's followed by a colon and then the rest of the title of the article. And I'm also indicating that you can edit this headline. So I want to make it a little bit smaller so I can see everything for that. Hard search, for hard search for less evasive brain surgery leads to the eyelid. So I know I'm going to need to retitle this so that it has one uh, attention grabbing word and then the rest of the headline. So if I had to do it, maybe it's talking about surgery. So maybe I'll say something like surgery colon. I'll let this be nice and bold. And the rest of this, I'll change that to italic. We'll select that, let it be larger. Since it's going over four columns, I do need to make sure that it only stays within one line deep. So maybe we'll just keep it relatively small. They're looking good like that for surgery. We'll set it to that. Now let's place our other information back into here. Just got body copy, so we'll highlight all of the body copy. Command C, jump back into here. Click and drag over four columns, paste it in, choose body copy, and then we'll increase the number of columns within the text box to be four. Again, zooming in, we want to make sure this is modular, so we'll click and drag up. That looks good. And then the final thing we'll do is adjust for widows and orphans wherever we can find them. There's one right there. 
So we can pull that one in or no, can't push it out. There's another one. Looks like I've got two lines down here at the very bottom. So let's see if I can push maybe some other one, two, some other lines out to give me some more room. If you can't, you can always bring more in. See, since I brought in two, now I can bring that up. And that one's looking good too. So there's our slammer headline. One dot, one bold, followed by something that's not bold or less intense. Oh, and let's make sure there's at least one, there it is, one baseline between our title and our body copy. Page four is looking good. Let's move on to our final page for page, excuse me, page three is looking good. Let's move on to our fourth page. For page four, this article is going to be about the Microsoft earnings. It's going to be a style of a hammer. It's going to expand four columns as well. So let's do the headline first. Command C. Let's make a four column headline. Bring that down. Now a hammer headline means that our headline itself, the main headline is going to be bold at the top and then the deck is going to be smaller and below it but still going across it. So this is the main attention getter and our deck should be going underneath it. So getting our deck text, copy that, create its own little text box, paste it into there. Let's make it small. And just like the other ones, I like to do a different style. So maybe this one can be italicized and runs all the way across there. There's a good hammer setting. I like to remember a hammer text is because the top of it is being hit, like you're hitting it over the head with a hammer. Once that's done, let's pull in our body copy. Command C, grab your type tool. Make a text box. Do make sure your text boxes stay inside of each of the margins. And then quickly format to be body copy. We're going to span that over four columns. And then we'll bring up the height of it to let it fit. And finally, go through and adjust any widows and orphans that you may see. So here's one here. We'll increase that. Here's another. Looking good. Like the last one. I've still got about two lines that I need to push through. So if this is the case, I can either try to select one and push down one more, or let's try this. If I've got too much room here, I'm going to pull this up one more, and I've actually gone over too much. I bet I can select some of these and bring in my letting and see if we can bring it in one or two until all of the lines are visible. So let's select those. There's that. Now I've got it perfectly set, nice and modular for all of those. Looking at this now, I can see my body copy is a little bit too far away, so I'm going to pull up the text. Now it's about one point away or one uh, baseline away from that one. Page four is looking good. The last one that I'll show you is page five. We need to add on another page, so let's go to our Pages panel. Add a new page, automatically it creates page 5 there. Page 5 is going to be a raw wrap using the LeBron article. So choosing that article, I'm going to select the headline. Now for a raw wrap, this is going to have the uh, headline cutting into the actual article itself. So the article is going to span five columns, but this particular headline is only going to span two columns. So I'm going to copy this headline, 
go back into here. Since the headline is only going to go two columns, let's do two columns for the headline. For now, I'm going to keep it small. Do the same thing for the cut line that goes with it. Giving it its own text box. Again, making that small as well so we can see it. And then finally, let's give a text box for our body copy. The body copy for this one is still going to span five columns. So make sure that text box goes all the way across these five columns before we paste it in as well. Again, give it a body copy for that. And then finally, we'll set the number of columns inside of our text frame to be that. Now, since this is a raw wrap, we want both of our headline and cut line to have text wrap around their text boxes. So I'm going to select them, go up to the very top here, turn on text wrap. And while I've still got them selected, let's bring them to the front so we can easily select those later. So go up to object, arrange, and bring them in front of everything. We'll bring our body copy up. You can see because we've got text wrap turned on, it automatically wraps around that. And let's deal with the headline first. So we'll pull this out of the way. Being two columns, two columns, we can get away with three, two to three lines of text. So let's see if we can make this much, much larger. Here it is at medium. I kind of like the sans serif style, so we'll keep it at medium. And that's actually looking pretty good. So we'll keep it at the default. LeBron climbs back in. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more letting just to let it breathe out. Now let's format our deck. The deck should be right underneath it. I'm going to give it a different style. So I'm going to make it sans serif, maybe smaller, and we'll let it be uh, italicized. I think I can get away with it being a little bit larger as well. Again, my size and my letting, they're both exactly the same, so that's not too bad, but I'm going to give it a little bit more letting just so it looks good. The final thing I'll do is adjust the size of my box to bring up my text so that it's a little bit closer. Again, there's a good 13 points difference between those two. Now that I've got my raw wrap inside of here, I can work on my body copy text box. Let's bring it up. Looks like it's going to fit nice and modular down at this side. Grab my type tool. Excuse me, let's zoom in and see if we can find any widows or orphans. There's one right there. 10, 20. There's another one. Here's one that I can't get rid of. So no matter what I do, there's always going to be at least one word set right there. Totally fine if that happens. Sometimes it's just unavoidable. One thing I do need to do is to buy myself one more line of text. So let's see if I can get a full paragraph and push it down. Looks like that's working right there. Now that I've got all five pages complete, Going back, double checking everything. Make sure you've got the correct article. Double check the style of it. So if this is a raw wrap, remember I'm turning on my text wrapping to uh, get that effect. Do make sure the spacing in between everything is nice. Nothing's too close to it, either the, the body copy or the headline. And also within your body copy, make sure it's spanning the correct number of columns all those columns are divided up correctly as well, and that everything reads and breathes nicely for each individual article. When you're finished, you should have 10 pages total, so you will need to be adding on more pages as you add on all of the articles. Go ahead and save this up as an InDesign file, and that InDesign file is what you'll upload to Moodle once you finish up this exercise.